look at us camping in our backyard under our beautiful canopy <laughs> no that's not the case welcome to this session yeah let's call it a session of RV daydream let's see how many days we can cram in on this one but yep here we go what have you been up to I've been riding on a daydream so look what we got going on we got the bumper on there everything's pretty much mounted except the boxes and Heidi's doing her job aren't you honey oh yeah you leave me the te most tedious bull crap her favorite in the whole world I'm hungry. Yeah, well, keep on working. Maybe we'll, I'll throw you a french fry. <laughs> Just like a seagull. But yeah, we've got uh, we got to mount these. I think I'm going to put these up on marine grade plywood um, to get them to where they're a little bit more elevated and it's easier to mount them too. Cut down on vibration maybe a little bit, even though we haven't run them yet. And uh, make it to where the boxes are easier to mount and secure. Um, but yeah, uh, also make it to where the doors open a little bit further too, um, which these work okay the way the doors are. We can get in and out. Uh, we could always flip these gates upside down and, and do it that way. But yeah, that's what we're doing. Heidi's enjoying herself, aren't you? It's not bad. Oh. I need this. I'm then darn it, I gotta find something else for it that's harder. Well, I'm totally wore out. It's not even that late, I don't think. It's uh. Yeah, it's only 4.30. Oh, I'm so damn tired. Heidi has to go to work tonight. Um, she's doing the floors, or they're redoing the floors, so somebody's got to be there, of course, management. So she's going to be up there all night. But the trays are all finished. The boxes um, look good. We got the coating off of them, or the, the white part, so it looks like it should. And, um, yeah it's it's nice this will work out really well so what do we have to do well to give you an idea that we only have about a week <laughs> I mean a full week but still a week uh, before we go to Pyreland and have our get-together even though there's a an outbreak like I mentioned last video um, pirate land that's what we plan on doing um, I still have to get all the tires on the uh, Rockwood, you know, the uh, the other tires here, the Goodyear Endurances. So I don't know what I'm going to do there, if I'm going to hook up the trailer and go or what. In the meantime, we have another problem that just popped out of nowhere. I was so excited because our son's finally got those Michelins on his van. He went and got an alignment. Uh, the van, everything, I just, we just told him, I said, you know what, this this thing is so ready right now and now it's overheating he drove to Canton and it overheated so I told him I said listen everything else is new I can't find any specific reason why it might be overheating might as well buy a radiator I said it's the worst thing a mechanic can do is just throw parts at a problem but the fan is pulling I can feel the heat the radiator the upper radiator hose measures roughly 20 degrees hotter than the lower radiator hose uh, the thermostat might be sticking on it. I doubt it though. I've never had a thermostat stick closed. And not only that, but it's a high flow thermostat. Yeah, it's definitely running hot and there's no reason for it. So I told him, I said, well, you got some time. Uh, in his case, he's got an eye doctor's appointment like on uh, July the 11th. And I don't know when you're watching this, but um, so he's got a week that he's got to sit here until he can go do that. So anyways, that's what we're doing. A new day with RV Daydream what you doing and guess what there's still no rain and guess what it's still real hot <laughs> we're still in this whole line of 85 to 90 degree days so uh, we actually have one day we're gonna be at 95 so this will be nice so Heidi's at work and it's kind of interesting they tore down the house up the street from us it's been needed tear down for a long time it, it actually probably improve the property values around here because of that it's really nice um, I guess we have another showing maybe on Sunday I, I don't remember um, Heidi always keeps me up to date but yeah if you guys look I don't know if you're gonna see it with this wide angle that's for sure but you can see all those tractors and stuff over there and bulldozers or cranes um, the house is gone the house is just a slab which 
That's good. Speaking of slab, here's a slab of wood for the generator mount in the back. I want to um, dampen the uh, sound just a little bit and uh, this will do just fine. Let me go a little bit further here. I'm trying to get it lined up with a couple of, of these bolts heads. That's real close right there. Yep. Okay. So, uh, generator box, tank box. Now, the generator box isn't completely finished yet. I bought some hardware. I'm going to have to do that. Again, I'm going to be covering this more a little bit on a video for um, like a generator box build or whatever. I, again, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. I did find the fan that I want to use. Um, I knew we had this around here somewhere. This is out of an old dehumidifier and it pulls. I don't know how to describe that, but um, the direction of air goes from right to left. So I can mount it inside there. It's got to be stood off just a little bit. I'll probably build a little box around it with these uh, scrap pieces of wood that I have here. I've used that in the past actually to dry off or dry out the champion generator box um, or champion generator gas tank when I did the test on gasoline and then I wasn't going to run it on gas anymore. So some people would ask, well oh, your champion, what about the champion and what about the Atima and all that? Those, the generators are gone, those generators are gone and I'm going to tell you that still by far um, for the money, uh, that Champion Dual Fuel, the 3400 uh, that I did a video on, go back and check out that video. I, I showed the generator. I also did another video running it on propane until it ran out. Um, you know, one full barbecue tank. Um, I also did a video of it running on gasoline until it ran out. Uh, that generator by far is the easiest, quickest, simplest way to go off-grid. Um, without worrying about solar or anything like that you just have to keep gas in it or propane however you want to run it uh, by far that's the way to go if you want to keep it cheap just buy the generator mount it put it in the back of your truck take it out chain it up whatever you want to do and use it that way it'll run your rooftop air conditioner one not both it'll run one of the rooftop air conditioners and it will uh, do the job um, by far it, it does the job now that Atima that I did a, a video on the Atima is a more refined generator it has a Yamaha engine on it um, it's a little bit quieter it's a different tone and even though it's listed as only 3000 watts I believe that one actually was a little bit better in the amperage department because after I installed these micro air soft starts on both rooftop air conditioners I don't know if you remember, I could run both of them on that Atima. I couldn't on the Champion, so that's something to think about. Oh my, look at that, the sun's going down, and uh, so is my energy level. Um, this one is mounted, I mean mounted, completely mounted. A little bit on the rigged up side here, a little bit on the rigged up side here, but that's because this was free, and that's because this was a leftover from something. Um, the exhaust, not sure yet, but you can check that out on the uh, the video that I talk about the box a little bit more so I think I'm closing out today uh, my son got his uh, van all straightened out um, it was the radiator it was basically clogged um, it didn't seem like it but uh, you know we kind of thinking back on it it made sense if you left it at an idle with the air on it wouldn't overheat it would do fine um, however when you drove it um, and uh, it was under a load and then you came to a stop it would overheat um, even when you're driving it it would it would start to climb uh, the other telltale sign I guess we should have known was that the uh, lower radiator hose would collapse and the upper radiator hose would expand whenever you revved it up so basically the water pump was trying to push it to the radiator and that's why the upper one was expanding and it was trying to suck coolant from the lower hose and that's why um, the radiator wasn't giving it up fast enough and that's why it was collapsing neither one of those situations happened now not only that but we put a cooler thermostat in so um, yeah he's in pretty good shape for the next day let's see what happens at three two one bam so today I'm gonna try to change the tires on the RV 
and uh, finish out that box. Um, but I'm going to get the tires off first. Now, I'm kind of in a weird situation here because I've got to jack up the RV, but I didn't necessarily want to put my slides in. And I don't know what that's going to do to the frame. I don't think that it's going to hurt it because even though I might shift the weight a little bit of the RV, uh, I'm not twisting the RV and I am supporting the RV in the same place in which the tires are. I, I guess that's, uh, you know, I don't know. I, we'll have to see what happens. I'll have, what I'll do is I'll take a look at everything and see if I can see any kind of twisting. Maybe this can be a lesson for you guys. But while I, uh, once I get those tires off and rims off of the uh, RV, put them in the back of the truck, throw all my new tires in the back of the truck, take them to the shop. Once I drop them off at the shop, then I'm going to come back here, because it'll take them a while, I'm sure, to change them all. And I'm going to come back here, I'm going to uh, work on that extended gas tank box. Uh, so I can you know drill the holes in it mount the stuff that I need to mount uh, then mount it to the generator rack and then I won't be able to use the generator the way that I wanted but we shouldn't have to do that anyways on this trip I mean we're essentially just going to a campground and then probably coming right back home again if I have to run the generator I'll just open the door and I'll run a chain through it you know a lock through it and just leave it in the tailgate um, but I gotta get it mounted. I gotta get that box mounted. And then Heidi's got a list of stuff that we need to do. Uh, the other thing is I gotta get the hitch on the truck, um, which that's not a big deal. And then of course packing. We need to get everything packed. All right, let me get to work. All right, so I have this side jacked up. I went and bought a bottle jack. Um, I'll let you guys know that it doesn't make a difference what brand you get or anything else. Um, you could probably get away with uh, less of a jack this is a 12 ton um i'm sure you get away with an eight ton or even less tell you the truth um but uh this one here was the uh for the money it was like three dollars more than an eight ton uh it didn't weigh that much more um there was another one that was like a 20 ton and it was much heavier i didn't want to have to manhandle that uh too much but even this one is, is a little heavy um but as far as the lift on this, this thing adjusts from nine and a quarter inches to 18 and a half inches is the uh, lift range. So anything that is in that realm, I'm sure will work. So again, nine and a quarter, that's what this is in height when it's fully collapsed and the screw is all the way down and it will lift up to 18 and a half. Now I'm going to tell you that <laughs> I'm not real keen on how high everything is and the slides are out so what I'm going to do for the time being is uh, leave the slides out so I can report to you if it works or not I already got in the RV to bring in the awning and nothing seemed out of whack all the doors open and close okay but I want to caution you about lifting your RV I found a really solid point to lift and and that's this boxed part of the frame now this isn't as strong as of course the frame itself but it is a direct connect with the frame as you can tell now I probably could have got it over a little bit more that way but it is holding and as far as my jacking point I used in the center here again that boxed area your situation is going to be different you may have leaf springs a lot of you have probably got leaf springs of course this is a torsion spring axle regardless torsion spring or leaf spring you got to be conscious of one thing and that is you don't want to jack up on the tube any more than maybe right here in so from here out to the tire whatever you hook up to should be okay um, I want to do the the rubber arm or the arm for the uh, torsion but anyways the reason is is I know that you're probably not going to be able to see this on this camera because it has such a distorted lens but these axles have a bend to them they both bend that bend and where it's bolted to the frame here 
that's how your tires get an alignment that's how they go down the road with the trailer straight you know keeping it straight if you screw up and put too much bend in that by putting your jack in the middle and trying to jack it up uh, it's not good that's not good at all so limited lifting uh, that you need to do uh, maybe just to change your tire of course you could use those beach lane levelers that I talked about um, but to do something like this I want all four tires off the ground I want all four tires and wheels up at the same time I have jack stands and I don't think there's any reason necessarily for me to bring these jack stands with us when we go full timing but I have them now so that's what I'm going to use them for so now I'm going to take the jack go over to the other side and uh, do the same thing and uh, I'll report back to you to tell you what I think about the uh, the slide if I hear or see anything that might be a little bit questionable but so far so good on this um, so these tires and wheels are ready to come off I'll leave them on for the time being while you jack up the other side last thing you want is uh, no tires and rims <laughs> you know, over here and as I jack over there something happens on this side that causes the jack stands to come off or something and uh, make them fall on the drums that would be a nightmare so we'll leave these on for the time being and uh, yeah let me move forward I was surprised how little torque uh, the lug nuts were on this I'm gonna definitely have to check the torque specs I think they're out on the tongue um, I'm pretty sure yeah let me let me look here because it seemed like that they came off awful easy yeah I don't know if I can read this because it's probably faded yeah it's not even it's not even on there if it is I don't see it I have to look that up. It don't seem like a lot, though. Oh well. Like I said, I'll look it up, and, and I think I took pictures of it. Maybe. Hey. Bet you they know how their phone works, though. But they don't know how to get in their car without it beeping. <laughs> all right, tires all loaded up. Let me go uh, swap these babies out, or, or drop them off at the shop, and then come back here and do some work. 98 degrees yeah it just dropped to 98 degrees it's actually uh, was 100 degrees when I fired this thing up um, and what am I talking about you know what I'm talking about the generator but this is it under load and then of course there's the gas tank that feeds it see the busy end of things I noticed that the tighter I put this ratchet the more vibration is being transferred into the RV hot in there even with this open I definitely need to do something there but it's all done until I can figure out the ventilation for that this will work for now I mean if anything I can uh, use this to uh, haul the generator and not have to worry about it being in the back of the truck and it's secured but once the ventilation is fixed once I get it to where it stays cool in here Probably what it'll look like minus the exhaust I don't know what I'm gonna do with the exhaust yet it's just kind of stuck through there right now but it's doing the job so I'll leave it there for the time being maybe I'll cut it off <laughs> yeah not bad all right time to clean up this mess can you believe that we're getting ready to go do our pirate land trip um, I'm not sure when you're watching this and uh, we might actually be there by the time you watch this and the uh, uh, RV, I, I don't even have a 50 amp surge protector for it. <laughs> I, I want to do, I, of course, I've got my own way I want to do it. 
Um, I would like to run the Hughes Autoformer, hardwire it inside the RV. I would like to also have a hardwire surge protector inside the RV. That way I can just plug into the pole and nobody is the wiser about whatever I've got. And I don't have to worry about somebody stealing it or anything like that. It's expensive though. And uh, to find it right now, it's out of stock. I can't get it in time. So we're going to just buy a cheap one. When I say cheap, it's like $140 from the local RV place. And uh, at least that'll be, you know, that'll protect us for the time being. But yep. How about that? Well, since the wheels and tires were off, Heidi suggested I do the, the Dexter Easy Lube. So I went ahead and lubed on the axles. It's 100 foot-pounds. That's what these are supposed to be torqued to. And then I had Heidi pick them up. Look, they all fit in her little car. <laughs> so now Heidi's going to come out here and install these so I can show her how to do it. Right? Yes? She says no. I also went ahead and hit the uh, uh, torsion, whatever you want to call it. The uh, What are those called? Why am I having a hard time with that? What's those bars called? The bars on the RV. Bars? Yeah, they're torsion bars, but I don't know. Anyways, so I went ahead and hit those too. So let me go ahead and get these tires on here. I got to then lower it. I'll torque it uh, at a hundred. No, I'm not turking it, torquing it, not twerking it, and uh, getting it down off of its perch. I have to put the uh, stabilizers back up and put the steps back up so I don't accidentally screw something up there. But we're getting it. We're getting along pretty good here. Now you may want to know why I was upgrading and I've talked about this in the past and I think I've been a little bit confused uh, to the point where I couldn't convey this enough or in the correct way. So I'm going to try to do it again here. Um, the tires are identical in size. Now these Castle Rocks from Lion's Head are on all the Rockwoods for quite a few years here and they do a good job. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I just feel a little bit more confident with all the traveling we're planning on doing. Uh, going with a tire that has not only a better name for itself, a better reputation, um, but also has more of a load rating ability. Now, it doesn't make a difference what, you know, the load rating is. My axles can only handle so much. The axles are rated for a certain amount, and that's it. Um, to be exact on this one, if you look on the axles, it says right on there that the maximum that each axle can take care of is 4,000 pounds. These are 4,000 pound axles. So even though I may put tires on here that can handle 6,000 pounds per axle, uh, these axles can only handle 4,000 pounds. So how does that work? How, how do you figure that out? First of all, the trailer when it's fully loaded is 8,800 pounds. So if these axles can only handle 8,000, where does the other weight go? Well, it goes on the tongue. That's where it goes. Uh, so that's why they're only rated for the amount that I just said. A lot of people get confused on that. But going back to the tires and why I went with the load rating higher is because these tires, the Castle Rocks, are a eight ply tire so they're a little bit lighter weight um, and they uh, you can see the sidewalls kind of a little flimsy um, but they are a D load tire and what that means is at 65 psi that's the maximum amount of air you can put in here you know that it's rated for and the maximum amount of weight that you can carry um, is 2,200 pounds for a uh, dual axle. Um, the, on a single, it's 2,540 pounds. So we'll keep that number in mind because we're just going to refer to single load capability. So this tire can handle 2,540 pounds at 65 PSI. So that means I've got to inflate these pretty much to the max. 
Um, usually when you put tires to the maximum inflation, sometimes that could cause some problems, some premature wear. Um, not only that, but the ride is going to be harsh. It's not going to be a soft ride because there is no pliability at that, at that pressure. Um, so going with this tire here, uh, Goodyear Endurance, like I said before, this is a 10 ply tire. This is an E rated tire. And this one, you can put it 80 PSI max. And if you have it at 80, it can handle quite a bit more. The maximum load rating at 80 uh, is 2,830 pounds um, for a single tire. So we've jumped up past the point that it needs to be uh, for these axles. So if you go to Goodyear's site, they actually have this tire and they have a chart that shows what you can get away with. So even though these tires, you can run them at 80 PSI, you just heard that I said, whenever you inflate the tire to its maximum capacity, it rides really hard. Um, it, it's, it's a harsh ride. So it's nice that I have this extra heavy duty tire, if you wanna put a word on it, we'll call it a heavy duty tire, and that it can handle the same amount of weight as that Castle Rock at its maximum inflation, but this one does it at 65 pounds. So instead of running at 80 pounds, I can run it at 65 pounds. So I have a higher rated tire that will actually ride softer if it's carrying the same load at the same PSI as the Castle Rock tire. So that's what I did with the Terry Camper. It improved my ride. It gave me a bigger footprint with the tire on the road. Um, you know, whenever you deflate the tire to the level that you want it, it'll put the footprint fatter on the road. You know, you should always check your tires and make sure that you're not running overinflated or underinflated. But it's nice to know that those tires can carry this load easily and not be stressed. Matter of fact, not even be at maximum inflation. So that's why we're doing it. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> well, the sun's gone down and, uh, oh, we still gotta take down the canopy. We're finding all kinds of crap that we are needing to be doing, but the most important thing is for right now, the tires are done. They're pretty unassuming. And actually, you know, they have less tread. They have less tread, which you put your finger in them, than those Castle Rock does. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> But I went ahead and put them to 55 pounds, so um, that's plenty, and that uh, is over 2,300 pounds, I think it is, for each tire, so basically 4,600, 4,600, and that's cold PSI, obviously. So I think we're closing this out, because we need to tie our next little thing together with us going to... Pirate Day Land. Ain't that right? Oh, you found the box of stuff. Oh, there's an antenna. See, something else I gotta do. I love it. There should be a big washer in here. We're, we're slowly getting the truck back to the way it was. Um, for you guys that are down in Pirate Land, we'll meet up. Uh, if you guys have a 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, F-150, F-250, uh, these might be something that might be down there. Um, yeah, there should be a washer. Uh-oh. So it ain't getting mounted because there ain't no washer. It's got to be in a bag or something. Okay, so we're closing out. Tell, tell everybody goodbye, Heidi. Bye. <laughs> As always, guys, we hope to see you out there. Bye.